How's it going guys? In this video, we're going to be learning how we can build our very first Flat application. And Flat is the fastest way to build Flutter apps in Python. And this is a very recent framework. So ChatGPT has no information on it. And the first app that we're going to create is an increment counter. And this is the exact same example that you're going to find in the documentation of Flat. And it's going to look like this. We're going to have a window where we can tap on two buttons. One will increment the counter and the other one will decrement the counter. And in case we want to change the number, we can also enter our own number here and then we can increment it and decrement it from that number that we inserted. And the window is also resizable. Anyway, it's the perfect app for getting started with Flat. Later on, we will try to build some more complex apps, but we all need to get started somewhere. So let's go to our code editor and you can use whatever code editor you want. I'm just going to be using PyCharm as always. And the first thing you want to do is open up your terminal and type in pip install flat. And that's all we need to install to actually use this framework. Then you can safely close the terminal and we can get started with our imports. And the first thing I want to import is flat as FT which is the naming convention they use in the documentation. So I'm just going to follow along with that. Then since I love using types, I'm going to import from flat the text field type and also from flat underscore core dot control event, I'm going to import the control event. Now let's create a main function that will contain all the code that displays the page, holds the buttons and that handles the functionality. And for now, we're just going to call this main. And that's going to take a page of ft.page. And since we're only executing this function, I'm going to say that it returns none. But first, let's start with some basic customization. So we can refer to our page and we can start by setting the title. And the title is going to be set to increment counter. Then we can say that the page dot vertical alignment is equal to FT and we want to get the main axis alignment and set that to the center since we want to center our elements. And by default, our app is going to follow the theme of our computer. So if you are in dark mode or if you specify dark mode on your computer, your application is going to be displayed in dark mode. But in case you want to change it to light mode manually, you can also refer to page dot theme mode and you can say, I want this to be light mode. And that will handle the basic setup of our page. Next, I'm going to create a variable called text number, and this is going to be of type text field, which will equal a text field with the initial value set to zero. And the text align is going to be set to the ft dot text align right. And we actually need to specify that this is the value. And then we can also provide a width of 100. And that's going to be our text box where we see the text. Next, we need to specify the functionality for our buttons. So the first one is going to be a decrement function. And it actually has one parameter, which is E. And that's what you will see in the documentation, but this stands for a control event. So you don't need to use that. But in case you want to log some messages or want to get some more information regarding the event, you can refer to E. And since we used that type annotation, we can also see what kind of attributes it has, such as page, name, data, target, and control. But we will not be using that in this video. I just recommend you use those type annotations so you can see exactly what E is. Anyway, right now we have this text number and we want to update the value each time we tap on the decrement button. So text number dot value is going to equal the string of the integer of text number dot value minus one because we need to convert our value to an integer before we subtract the number and then convert it back to a string since a text field holds a string. And each time we do that, we need to update our page. So we will call page.update. And we're going to duplicate this function for the increment functionality. So we just need to change this to increment. And down below, we're just going to add one instead of subtracting one. And that takes care of the setup. Now we just need to actually create the page and combine the functionality. So below these functions, we're going to create something called page.add. And what we want to add is a row. And inside this row, we're going to use some square brackets to add some controls. And the first one is a flat icon button. And as the image, we're going to refer to ft.icons.remove. 
And this button also takes an onClick method, which of course is going to be our decrement function. And between this button, we want to insert our text field. So we're going to insert the text number. And then we can copy this icon button once more because we need to do that for the increment button. So here, instead of remove, we're going to add and we're going to increment. Keep in mind, we're not using parentheses here because we're calling it as soon as we click on it. Anyway, below these square brackets, we have one more parameter we need to specify, and this is the alignment. So here we can refer to ft.mainAxisAlignment, and we want to center things once again, since we want everything to be in the center of the program. And all that's left for us to do is to actually run it. So we'll type in if name is equal to main, then we will pass in ft.app, and we need to specify a target, which is our main target. And with that being done, we can actually run our program. So if we run main, it's going to open up a new window next to my old one, which I will just delete. And it will have our increment button. So we can go up or we can go down. And if you don't like that this is aligned to the right, we can go back to our script and we can play around with that. We can say that the text align should be centered and that the width can be a bit smaller. We can set that to, let's say, 80. And then if we rerun this script, we're going to have a smaller text box with the text centered. So now we can say 100 or 1000, and we can increment from there or decrement from there. And as I mentioned earlier, with the theme mode, if you were to comment that out, it would follow the theme of your computer. So by default, it's in dark mode for my computer since my entire computer is always in dark mode. And if we increment and decrement, it will work exactly the same way. And the last thing I want to mention in this introduction to flat, since we've already covered a lot, is that we can also run this in web mode. And to do that, we just need to change the view to ft.appview.webbrowser. And now the next time we run this, it's going to open it up in a web browser. So now we can actually run this online and we can see how it will look when someone loads our website. So yeah, with that being done, we just created our very first flat application. And I know these were the bare basics, but the idea is to continue building upon this. So eventually I want to get to the point where we can comfortably create things such as nice chat applications and just see what the potential of flat actually is. Because from the documentation and what I saw so far, flat looks awesome. Anyways, do let me know in the comment section down below what you think about flat, whether I missed something important, whatever feedback you give me in the comment section down below, I will use for the next lesson. So it's always very much appreciated when you leave a comment down below. I read all of them. And yeah, with all that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.